أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الا ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الناس اتقوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد Today we are going to talk about a topic concerning behavior Behavior is how we act in different circumstances Why is this important because how we act in different circumstances is a path to jannah or to jahannam so if you find yourself in any circumstance where you have to react to what's happening around you, then that's an opportunity for you to go to Jannah. Right now we are in a circumstance, we are in the mosque, listening to the khutbah. How we act in this circumstance is a pathway that will lead us to Jannah if we follow the rules of listening to khutbahs or giving khutbahs. So, any circumstance is a pathway, it's a door. Either you open one to Jannah or you close that and open one to hellfire. That is the topic of akhlaq, behavior. All of us, Allah has created us in a certain way. We are created with goodness in us. 
kullu mauludin yuladu ala fitra every child is born with fitra in a way that allah has made them in a good manner fa abawahu but the parents who are the immediate environment for the child you have widani they turn that child from fitra to yahud someone who doesn't follow what they know to be true that is a yahudi a person who sees the truth they know this is the truth they know why they should follow the truth but they just don't so if you have a child and you do things in their life such that they realize this is true but they don't follow it blame yourself for most of it some of it is beyond you but number one, blame yourself if you're such a person then your environment might have contributed but you are also another cause wa abawahu yuhawidanihi aw yunasiranihi sometimes children they are born they are given to you but then you make them into nasara nasara are people who don't know what is expected of them they don't know the truth they are lost they are in darkness so if ever you have a child who is in darkness they don't know right from wrong they don't know how to act what to do what to believe in how to behave in certain circumstances blame yourself because the prophet says for abawahu the father and the mother they misguide the child so we have a big opportunity to guide others however we guide them through our own behavior they learn from us if you are a person who knows the truth and doesn't follow it will rub off on the people who are under your influence If you yourself you don't know and you don't care to know it will rub off on the people who are under your influence and then the evil multiplies So how do we get out of this situation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives us two ayahs that guide us out of this Number one, he says to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim prophet you have excellent behavior in any circumstance that a human being finds themselves in you act in the best manner in the great manner khuluq azim so the prophet's behavior in any circumstance is usually the best that can be expected of a human being And in the second ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana you have the best example in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so if ever you find yourself in a situation and you don't know how to behave just look back at the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was he ever in a similar situation how did he behave then that should work you know situations change but the prophet has been in all kinds of situations that you will ever find yourself in ever so all you have to do is learn how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam acted in a similar situation then you act in that way every week we start the khutbah and we say innal hamdalillah then you say wa khairal hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best guidance is the guidance of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muhammad guides us in everything we do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in any situation you find food in front of you there was food once in front of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what did he do how did he act did he eat did he not eat how did he eat what did he say how did he treat the people around him when there was food on the table did he give them did he deny them did he invite them what did he do when there was food in front of him alas you have all your answers 
from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You are in a situation, you are talking to someone and they are angry and they are talking bad and they are abusive and you feel the anger in you and you want to act and you ask, was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam ever in this situation? Yeah, there was that Abu Lahab time, there was that time, yeah. How did he act? What did he say? What did he do? How did he treat this other person? Then you have your work cut out for you. Just act like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and you are done. So this issue of akhlaq, we all have our own different akhlaq. I have mine, you have yours, everyone has theirs. You can try to be yourself. You know people say, be yourself. But you are not the best person. You could try to be yourself and you destroy a lot. You could have good akhlaq in you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recognized the person's good akhlaq. He says, Inna fika khislatani yuhibbuhuma Allahu wa rasulu. You have two good characters. Allah loves this character. And the Prophet loves this character. So some people, they have good character, naturally. But not everyone. You know, the self-bet, be like the Prophet. If you think you have good character and it's the kind which the Prophet has approved of or is in the Quran or something like that, then go ahead. You can trust the people around you when they tell you so and so is good, but you don't know. Sometimes their judgment can be wrong. In Tutayu Akhtar Manfil Arz, if you listen to most of the people on the earth, they will misguide you. No, there's a way you can learn about yourself from others, but they could be wrong. Allah is never wrong. The Prophet is always right. Other people around you, they could be wrong. So, whatever they tell you, bring back to Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If it's what Allah says and the Prophet, well and good. Now, we were in Ramadan. We did a lot of qiyam. The last 10 days of Ramadan, we were in the mosques, we were in the houses, praying the whole night. Now that is one path to get to paradise. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna rajula la yudrik. Verily a person will get, okay? Bi husni khuluqihi. Because of his good behavior, he will reach the station of this person who was praying at night. You know, when you pray at night and you've done your tahajjud and you've done your dua and you feel I'm just going to Jannah. Yeah. If that angel comes right now, Jannah is my path. He says, another way you get to that level is by having good behavior towards others. You know, this one, you do it alone, it's easy. The only thing which can stop you is shaitan, and shaitan was locked. So you are doing a lot of ibadah. Another path, similar path that takes you to Jannah, is when you behave well with people. Your behavior. And how, which part of Jannah do you get with good behavior? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna min aqrabikum ilayya majlisan. Inna min, ah, inna min ahabikum ilayya wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyama. The people who will be closest to me. The Prophet said, I'll be sitting and there'll be people sitting next to me. So, how, how do you get to sit next to the Prophet? Very close, not there on the other, on the edges. Just next to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You sit next to the Prophet when you have ahsanukum akhlaqan. The best of you in behavior towards others will be the closest to me. So, how you behave towards other people, you will always know that it's easy. You know, people will be coming close to you or they'll be going far away from you based on how you treat them. 
You treat people nicely, they want to be next to you. Mashallah, brother, how are you? Uh, everyone wants to meet you. You treat people badly, you say, Assalamu alaikum, like, alaikum salam, alaikum salam, I'll see you. It could be them, not you, but most of the time it's you, not them. People don't want to come close to you. The Prophet was told, لَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would run away from you if you are tough and you're not the kind of person people want to be around. They run, around, they run away from you. So when people are running away from you, it's a bad sign. Try to bring people close to you. And if you have good akhlaq and people keep wanting to stay near you, talk to you, they like the way you treat them, then that closeness, you will see it. In the day of Qiyamah, when you are made to sit next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's what you get by treating people nicely. And the Prophet says, these are ahabbikum ilayya, the people who I love most. So the Prophet looks at all the Muslims and he sees the ones with good manners. He says, these are the ones I love more. I love you all, but these ones have good manners. I really love them. If you want to gain the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just have good manners. Treat people nicely in the way they feel respected, in the way they feel like this is a good person to be around. And the Prophet would want to be around you, and the Prophet would love you, and Allah will make that a reality in the day of Qiyamah. So this is what we get. Now, when you go to Jannah, and it's like a state or like a town, there is the outskirts of town, then there is the middle part of town, and then there is the high areas. The Prophet says, Ana za'imun bibaitin fi rabadil Jannah. The Prophet gives a guarantee. You know, it's like, you want a house? Yeah, I guarantee you, you'll get a house in this part of Jannah. Limantaraka al Mira'a. On the outskirts, you will get a, you'll get a house there. If you stop arguing with people. Although you are the one on the right, and people just want to argue, and you are arguing, you know you are right, but they argue and you argue back and they give their false points and you give your true points. We're not talking about da'wah, where someone is saying you can worship this tree. No, that one you have to naqdifu bil haqqi al batil fayatmaghuhu fayadahu azahik. You give the truth until you destroy the batil. You can't worship trees. That's different. We're talking about arguing, normal argument. No, 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 no. I think candidate A is the best candidate because candidate B is the best. You can't convince them. They'll go to candidate B, you'll go to candidate A. Stop arguing such things. Although you might be right, but you say, okay, I'm not arguing. The prophet says you will get a house in the outskirts of Jannah. You know, you've done a good deed, Jannah is guaranteed. House in the outskirts. But there's something better. The Prophet says, Wabi baitin fi wasatil Jannah. You shall get a house in the middle part of Jannah. It's better. Limantarak al Kadiba wa inkana mazihan. If you stop lying, or even if it's a joke, I was just joking. I'm just joking, man. But you said it, yeah, I was just joking. Don't lie, even if you are joking. Joking is okay. Make people smile, make people laugh, but don't lie, just speak the truth. You know, truth can be fun. Find fun in the truth. Say something funny, the prophet would make people laugh, smile, but he would just speak truthful matters. You know, a joke doesn't have to come from a lie. A joke is when it's a strange thing, but it's true. Find such kinds of jokes. Never lie. And you are guaranteed a part in the middle of Jannah. Then you go high, in the high class parts. Aalal Jannah. The area where you find the prophets, <laughs> including Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi, if you want to go in that part, like your neighbor is the prophet, you know, 
You look outside your window and you see the Prophet's mansion. It's like, <laughs> it's my neighbor. How do you get to that path of Jannah? It says, That's highest house will be there for someone of good character and behavior. When you behave nicely with people, then you are closer to the Prophet in Jannah. al Jannah. So you see, this Jannah is not just about the Swalah. No, Swalah is the key. But when you get to this part of Jannah, it's when you act nicely towards people. Khuluk is about people. Yes, there is Khuluk with Allah. That is when you do your, you have the proper aqidah and you do the proper actions and you keep away from innovations and all that. However, the khuluk with people is what matters most. You might be the best person, then you find yourself in Jannah, and you might be a good person and you find yourself in hell. Yomul Qiyamah, someone will come bankrupt. Bankrupt people don't, it's not that they don't have properties, it's like they do have properties, but they have debts which are more than their properties can service. So you go to Jannah, lots of real estate you have. You know, you did your salah, you did your psalm, you did your qiyam, you did your sadaqa, you did everything. And mashallah, mountains and mountains of tawab. And then you have a lineup of people. You oppressed someone somewhere. And they come to say, Allah, I want a quarter. Washata mahadha, your tongue, you abused someone somewhere. You see, Allah will forgive you. Don't blame Allah. You say, oh, Allah, forgive me, I, I abused someone. Allah forgives you. No problem. Allah will forgive you 100%. He will not hold it against you. But that's Allah and you. But there's that other guy between the two of you. Allah doesn't come in the middle and say, I forgive you on behalf of. No, he has to forgive you. So don't blame Allah, Allah, why are you doing this? It's your fault. You went ahead and abused him. You oppressed him. You took his wealth. You did what you did. Now don't say, Allah, forgive me, when it's your fault, you and that person. Find him right here, right now in this dunya. Go to this person, say, so and so, I'm sorry. You know, this is the person who can stop you from going to Jannah. He comes, he takes away all your tawabs. Like right now, you are in khutbah, Jumu'ah, Allahu Akbar, tawab. Then that person, because of something you did, he comes and enjoys all this tawab. Why? Tell him sorry. Then after that, whether he agrees or not, that is his fitna. You've done your part. And tell him sorry for real, not like, I'm sorry, okay? Like, I'm really sorry. And then, it's up to them now to accept or not. That's not your part, okay? Whether they accept or not is between them and Allah. But your part is to be really sorry about what you did to someone. Go to them and apologize. It could be a person who is very close to you. Your father, your mother, even some of your children, your wife, your brother, your neighbor. That workmate, that guy, the one who you did something wrong to 10 years ago and you keep saying, but he deserved it. He didn't. Go say sorry. Because when this tawab is taken from you, you'll find yourself in hell. Akhlaq, how you act towards others. We ask Allah to make us of those who hear and understand. Inna alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Inna ma bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq Allah sent me so that I can complete the good behaviors which are in people so we are all incomplete. 
But by being like the prophet, we complete ourselves. He's the best example. Try to be like the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is sunnah? Alaykum bi sunnati. The prophet says, take my sunnah. Sunnah is a mode of acting. That's what sunnah means. So we say, I am ahlu sunnah. I am a person who follows the sunnah. Like, I act like the prophet acted. I worship like he did. Are you actually a person of sunnah? Are you acting the way the prophet acted? Do you get angry in the places where he got angry? Do you feel happy in the places where he felt happy? Are you saddened by the things which made him sad? Or are you saddened by your own set of things? My team lost. Today is not a good day, so no salam, brother. Salam alaikum, not today. <laughs> My team lost. Seriously? Say salam alaikum wa alaikum salam. That's the son of the prophet. Do you care about what he cared about? The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like, you be the Prophet. Imagine, like, if I was the Prophet, what would I be caring about right now? What kind of things would I be thinking about? Or how would I be acting in this situation? Just imagine yourself, like, if I were the Prophet. You are not, but if. Then act accordingly. That's one. Number two, how do you do it, actually? You look at yourself. Okay? Look, Inna Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Inna Allah, in the hadith of Abu Hurair, Inna Allah la yandur ila suarikum. Allah doesn't look at your form, what you look like. Wa amwalikum, He doesn't look at how much wealth you have. He gave it to you, He knows how much wealth you have. But liyandur a kaifa ta'amalun, what are you going to do with it? You have questions for that. What does Allah look at? Yandur ila kulubikum. Your hearts, what do you intend? Do you intend to make Allah happy? Do you intend to trick people? Who do you intend? Wa a'amalikum. And he looks at your actions. How do you behave? Yandur, how are you behaving? You're given wealth. Are you behaving with kibr? Or are you tawadah? Do you have tawadu? You are not given wealth. You are poor. How are you acting in that situation? You know, some people, they are poor and they get very angry at Allah. They get spiteful. They have hazard. They look at someone who has some wealth and they feel pain. Why does so and so have? Because Allah gave them. Simple answer. What's your problem? Allah gave them. You want to fight Allah? Ask for yours. Work for it or something. So, some people they are poor, it's a fitna for them. Some people they have a lot of wealth and they look at others and they think like, poor people, Allah hates them. That's why he didn't give them. Allah didn't give prophets. The prophet would go without food in his house, without food. Today, tomorrow, the day after, do you, have, do you guys have food? So they say, okay, let's fast. The Prophet didn't have anything in his house. He was the best human being. Don't look at a person who is begging you for something and you think, oof, the Prophet didn't have. So it happens. That's not your problem. Just act the way the Prophet wasallam would have acted. You look at your eyes. What am I seeing? What are the responsibilities do I have with my eyes? Look at what is halal. Don't look at what is haram. You are done with your eyes. What am I doing with my mouth? Am I speaking the truth? Am I lying? Am I removing someone's secret? Or am I keeping my mouth shut? What am I doing with my tongue? Look at your hands. What am I doing with my hands? Am I holding what I should hold? Or am I holding something which is haram for me? Then you leave it. Look at your stomach. What is going in there? This food in my stomach, is it halal or haram? It could be a pig or it could be fish. 
but it could be also something you eat out of halal or it could be something you eat out of haram. This thing in here, what kind of food is it? Am I even supposed to be eating? Then you look at what is below. Who am I with in my relationships? Is this my wife or is this someone who is not my wife? Is this my husband or someone who is not my husband? You consider those kind of things about your relationships. How am I treating this person? Look at your feet. Where am I going? Look around you. Am I supposed to be here? Is this the kind of place where the Prophet will allow me to be? Where are my feet taking me? You could be walking, you could be riding, you could be driving. The feet is involved in all the places you go. This is how you check your behavior, by looking at your body and what every part is doing. Because this body is what's going to Jannah, and this body is what's going to hell. Just look at it and make sure everything is okay. Allah, he doesn't look at the body here, yeah, but he looks at what you do with this body. Ila a'amalikum. We ask Allah to make us one of to make us of those who have the best akhlaq. You know, there's this dua. We look in the mirror. You look at yourself in there. And you say, Allahumma ahsanta khalqi. Oh Allah, you've given me the best body. Fa ahsin khuluqi. Then also make my behavior to be the best behavior. La yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant. Oh Allah, nobody will lead me to the best behavior except you. The same way we say, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide us to the best path. We tell Allah to guide us to the best behavior. For no one can guide to the best behavior except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know ourselves. You know, this self. It's in you. Allah gave it to you. But you don't know what it can do. You might think you're a good person. Then something happens and phew, a word leaves your mouth and you want to hold it, but it's gone. How did it happen? When you get married, you place your hand on your spouse and you say, Allahumma. Then you pray to Allah. You ask for something. You ask for the goodness which is in your spouse and for the goodness which Allah placed in them. And you ask Allah to save you from the evil which Allah might have placed in people, in them. You, you are a human, you could have evil in yourself. You ask Allah to save you. When we start the khutbah, we say, Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina. Allah save us from the evil which is within us and from the evil consequences of our action. Our akhlaq can lead us to very, very bad places in this dunya before akhirah. So we ask Allah to save us from the evil consequences of things we do and from the evil which is within us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us proper task here. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma ahsin akhlaqana. Allahumma ahsin akhlaqana. Allahumma ahsin akhlaqana. Allahumma ahdina ila al-jannah. Allahumma ahdina subul al-jannah. Wa sadi Allahumma ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa aqimi salam. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى تدل استوى
الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ون الضالين آمين أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين وذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يخض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله لا من تسلم لك السلام